Fun fact. This shirt is not wet. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened, but I love this shirt, so I'm wearing it anyway. Citizens of the Reject Nation, we got ourselves the third episode of Lord of the Rings. John, how are you? I am good. How are you? Good. Almost 24 hours awake, and I'm ready to and receive this episode you're ready today. ready for a thick boy. Uh, there's <laughs> some other things I've been doing outside of this channel that have been keeping me very, very busy, but I'm excited. It's Lord of the Rings, guys. And those first two episodes have gone over universally 100% everyone for everyone. Loves it. <laughs> so, yeah, the conversation around this show has been nothing short of an enjoyment. <laughs> All right, guys, um, leave a like if you're here. I would, I would appreciate that. Or leave a dislike if you're one of those people. Also, subscribe and click that notification bell to get notified when our reaction for the next episode of Lord of the Rings is up here on this channel. As always, full and through action watch longs where you sync it with the time code, meaning your own copy. Uh, available at our Super Sexy Rejects Patreon page. Over there, we cover several shows with the same tier. You get options for reaction highs and watch alongs included for several shows. I think I said that right. And uh, the team of Prepper, thank you for helping us edit down these highlights. All right, guys, let's see. Let's see if there's a good one. It's the game. It's the game you play, Lord of the Rings now. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the dice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a whole bunch of con shoes. <laughs> or backstage at a haunted house. Oh, wow. That's pretty evil. <laughs> what is this place? Wow. The westernmost of all mortal realms. The island kingdom of Numenor. Numenor! Oh. I don't know if anybody's pointed this out yet. But uh, some of the visuals and production design are, are really striking and beautiful. Numenor began to turn away our ships. In time, they broke off all contacts. Why? We may be about to find out. You would not want to be lost here without an escort. You filthy elf. Something feels very Roman about this whole thing. It is because of the elves that you were given this island. What? Surely you can spare a few planks and a rudder. Don't forget your history. They paid for this isle with the blood of their kin. What the elf means. Then if blood be the price of passage, I will pay it. God, one way or another, I will depart. You need to take a master class on negotiations, Galadriel. <laughs> <laughs> Give and take. Three days, and the elf is to be restricted to palace crown. I will not be made a prisoner. I would sooner kneecap a stallion than seek to imprison the mighty commander of the northern army. <laughs> <laughs> My gratitude. He just stole your wallet. <laughs> I have been searching for my peace for longer than you know. Please, for both our sakes, let me keep it. You got a sharp eye. How did he take a, a big ass blade like that? Editing. <laughs> I, I knew he did, but I was like, how? <laughs> he goes high, your eye goes up to the shoulder, and you just forget all about the rest of your body. Oh, Easter egg. You see, no, no, no. They're placing the sea god. Becomes more than just Numenor's protector. So that one. Oh, yeah. Save the crew moment. like a more sexy Tony Revolori. 
Add a little bit of Luke Wilson in there. Isildur, your sister's here. There you are. Beric, my boy. <laughs> that's, that's actually funny. Are you an elf friend? I'm a loyal servant of Numenor. You dodged the question. It was the sea that put her in my path. And the sea is always right. Ooh. Given the circumstances, I did only what I believed to be most prudent. Then I shall have to ask you to perform a service. He can't kill Galadriel. Bring me the head. Do I sense an allegory here? <laughs> and place south, black man put in chains, and country squabbling over the ethics of their origins. From those lips and dick. Oh. Rip the whole stinking tree down. We shall go around. Try it, Elf. And I will make a mess of your back! <laughs> That's some gnarly makeup. It has earned its place in these lands. <laughs> You've just earned your company. A water ration. Surely you thirst. <laughs> Come on, man. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. These orcs look great. No! Oh. <laughs> I love that elf, man. The one who just died. Is yeah, it was the best one. I was one. very attached to. <laughs> <laughs> Spent so much time bonding <laughs> over the course of three episodes. Informed him last time. That was a dog. <laughs> I'm afraid the queen has charged me with seeing to it that you cause no further disturbance. I've got to cut off your head. Anywhere is better than here. Where I am hated by all who see me. So call to your guards. Or get out of my way. You know, if you wanted to be undercover, just cover your ears. <laughs> it is still taught in our Hall of Law. Still carved on statues throughout the city, if you look closely enough. Your Hall of Law, how far is that? Quarter day's ride. Did you say ride? Boom, boom, boom. I'm a guest on your island, and I haven't shown you the faintest bit of gratitude. Next few rounds on me. Let's get some songs. Oh, look where his hand is lingering. <laughs> Keep watching his hand. And he took it. <laughs> it's good. Don't do this. Oh. Why not? No man! Ouch. He wants a new start because he's John Wick. Oh! Yes! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn. Call me a rat. Woohoo. You didn't say the Hall of Law was assembled by Elros himself. You knew Elros? An uncommon spirit. But I was always closer with his brother. Hmm. Remarkable. That's a damn good accurate painting. He drew this to recall the tower's location. Wait a moment. I must be blind. 
is no sigil. It's part of the map. We'll make it to the grove. How? Now stay at the front of the caravan. And we got Nori. Look, once that girl puts her head to something, nothing can stop her. It's part of the problem. <laughs> Now you lay one paw on that book and old Sadik will use your height to make its next batch of pages. You got a better idea. <laughs> what sense did sticking your neck out for him any more than you already have? There's head sense, Poppy, and there's heart sense. There's common sense and nonsense. <laughs> borrow some of mine. Rather borrow some star charts out of that book instead. And you're going to help me, or would you rather I let slip to Melva? It was you who put fireweed in her toe cream. I'll keep watch. Don't you lose her, Samwise Poppy. Well, they said that uh, Silver's father's name, um, was it like Admirer of the Stars or something? Yeah. So another of his line. So it's definitely Gandalf. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> mm. You are not subtle. How much have you got left? Just a little left. Just tell them I'm almost ready. Right. No, I mean left. Yes. No, I, I, I'll tell them right now. I'll go straight now. <laughs> Dewis. Lindsay Proudfellow. Taken by landslide one rainy winter day. We wait for you. Jesus. Jeeps. So they needed to create like a shire. <laughs> Yikes, dude. Oh. <laughs> it's a Balrog. You have lied, you've stolen, brought a dangerous outsider into our midst. And she lied. He already. <laughs> our way has kept us alive a thousand years. Our laws are clear. Any harfoot that breaks them is to be decaravaned. Oh my god. Miss Brandyfoot is young, but there's much hair still to grow on her toes as sense between her ears. Tomorrow we depart as planned at the back of the caravan. At the back? At the back. Get the man to help out. <laughs> yeah, just have him carry your dad. That's all right. I was thinking I might defer. Defer? Just for a season, perhaps. There is nothing for us on our western shores. The past is dead. We either move forward or we die with it. And, and do you think it was easy convincing the sailmaster you were up to the task? I never asked you to do that. Yes, you did. When you got into a scrap with the Queen's Guard. They started All that. got thrown out of your horse train. That wasn't my fault. Actually, it feels right that one wasn't. I wasn't talking to you! Sildur was a rebel. In nine days' time, when the sea trial begins and that ship launches, you will be on it. I made apprentice. I've been accepted to the Builders Guild. Hmm? I thought the guild never reconsidered. Isildur convinced me to reapply. Isildur convinced you? He's a ghost. He's already gone. Off to the western shores. A man bearing that mark. United the scattered tribes of the Southlands under one banner against the evil that now seeks to claim their lands. Your lands, Halbrand. He's got, he's got that banner. Dude. For you are him. Huh. Kind of reminds me of a character from those movies. Oh, uh, who it was? Airy, Airy, Airy Potter. For it was his ancestor who swore a blood oath to Morgoth. I am not the hero you seek. But it was my family who lost the war. And it was mine who started it. Ours was no chance meeting, nor any of the words men used to speak of the forces they lacked the conviction to name. Even the reason he decides to not fight is similar to Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me to Middle Earth, and together we will redeem both our bloodlines. You're stuck on this island. That is all about to change. 
It is here, Father. The moment we feared. The elf has arrived. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Gonna have to start giving all sorts of land back to the elves, man. It's gonna topple everything. Is he doing it? He's doing it. Friend. This is how we keep up with the others, all of us. He helps us and what we help him. Hitch both cards to him. Whoa. Ow. <laughs> Looks like a f***ed up Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Ugly Sonic's getting work. Oh. Yikes. Tame it. Earn its respect. I'm pretty sure that's not happening. <laughs> It also kind of looks like the American werewolf. Damn, this dude's just flying today. <laughs> <laughs> and just as deadly with a twig as anything else. Chuckles McGee. <laughs> I, you know, some some things just work. Little moments come together, and I'm like, ah, it's fun or clever, or, or I wasn't expecting that. And, and those things get a chuckle from me. I'm Editors. Like, I'm amused. Keep every time John chuckled. We're going to play. We should have a head count. It's good. Sure. Have, sure, yeah. John, John smiled. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a little count, a little counter. Yeah. This is one of the ways I react to stuff. At times, I don't understand. I'm like, you don't have to understand. Although, if it's a problem, <laughs> I'll stop doing it. I guess I'll <laughs> I'll focus in and be very self aware enough it's not to do it. Like, but I don't understand what's funny or amusing about. That. It's not always that it's funny. Sometimes it's clever, and and sometimes those clever moments stand out because this is a show filled with 
beauty and filled with like a lot of clear craftsmanship and skill. Sometimes it's during really dark moments. <laughs> That's when I'm like, what? I don't yeah, know what just, every now and again, a dark moment reaction. will still <laughs> strike me with something clever or or a tonal twist I wasn't expecting or something, and that'll just I don't know. Because um, then I'm like, nice, nice one, nice one. People behind the camera or whatever it happens, whatever context that I'm. Clever chuckling in. <laughs> Clever chuckling? I guess that's what I would boil it down to. I mean, you know, it, it's not a... There's no uniform description for it. It happens under a lot of different circumstances. But yes, if I'm if I chuckle during a moment that isn't clearly a joke moment, it's usually, oh, there's like a weird little detail that, you know, called me toward the movie magic or called me toward, you know, just like some neat twist that I wasn't expecting behind the camera. It's the best I could describe that. Can you give me an example? Uh, from this episode? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't log them. <laughs> They're natural enough to me that I, you've noticed them more uh, directly than I have. I'm not challenging you to anything. I'm literally just asking. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll think of one while we go. Wrong. Boom. Point proof. <laughs> no, I was just asking. That's, that. how, that's how we used to argue. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a concrete example mm. for a thing you weren't doing consciously. Yeah, like any good relationship fight. Logical rings around you, sir. Name one time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back through the rear. But, but here's the thing is we have the footage. So I'll go back and review the footage. And then I'll get back to you with all the. I'll sync it up. And I'll do the watch along, <laughs> and I'll be, be like, amazing. here's one. Okay, that was it. Like, I already forgot about this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have 16 distinct moments. I'm way over this. <laughs> where, where I, that, that was clever because of this, and I thought that was neat because of that. Yeah, I'll stop caring about this conversation in like five seconds. <laughs> so. See, that's the difference between you and me is, is because, yeah, then I'll take that home and be like, oh, no, I got to I gotta analyze this for myself and figure out. I don't it. care enough about this shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's fine. Fine. So what do you what do you think? I take, thought, take it away. <laughs> I thought this was decent. I don't know. Maybe I maybe I have those clever laughs because of the odd experience this has been so far. Because there's stuff I really like about the show. And Let me interrupt to you. You don't have to explain. I'm just teasing you. I don't, you don't have to explain anything to me. Like no, I'm but it, I, I'm using it as a segue now. I'm using it as a segue because I some shows and certain things make me do that more than others. And this show has an interesting blend because I'm inclined to want to meet the show halfway. You know, I'm always rooting for a good Lord of the Rings universe, anything. Despite trepidations, I wanted the Hobbit movies to be unanimously agreeable. Um, and this has, you know, a lot of things I appreciate, and it does have moments of warmth or intimacy that draw me in. Um, but it is, to me, right now, just here in this moment, and maybe with more consideration I'll feel different, but, you know, it feels like it's a slow unfolding, and it's sort of like, it always feels like it's ramping up <laughs> towards something big and, and, and some kind of... I always feel like... Um, it's like a song that that never breaks into some kind of cathartic chorus quite where it's like okay I'm interested in everybody and I kind of I almost feel it's you could have uh, I could spend more time in cut between less things per episode because I just want to see the life between these you you commented when uh, the one elf died uh, during the fight and that's clearly supposed to be an impactful emotional moment. And I was in that moment, but I wasn't like caught up and, and emotionally wrenched because, yeah, it, like I liked those three actors together and I liked the actor who, you know, had just, you know, uh, bit it. But, you know, we don't get the time spent in this situation beyond, okay, here's what it's like getting into the slave camp now. Here's what it's like just doing the activity and now we got to, you know, figure out a way out of it. And now here's a big confrontation. You know, I feel like if we could spend a little more time, mm -hmm. uh, that would help. Uh, but yeah, like I'm interested in everything. It's just not yet got that, like the pace is moving and everything's kind of locking together and complementing each other. It just feels like we're checking in on different points of a big wide map. Are you in, uh, okay. 
Are you enjoying it? Yes. Yeah, I'm not loving it yet. There's a lot of stuff I enjoy, admire, and appreciate. There's stuff I do want more of or, you know, want to become more substantial. It's not perfect. I don't love it yet, but there's a lot I really like about it. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy for you. I mean, you're laughing your fucking ass off because of the fact of how much you enjoy this shit. <laughs> That's right. I'm just like, give me more. This is absolutely perfect. Just give it to me. I just, yeah, it's my shit eating grin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I love something, I just only laugh. Uh, well, no, I mean, hey, there's a lot of people who are really enjoying this show. I'm really happy for you guys. <laughs> I gotta say, this is like a two out of three for me. <laughs> I'm just, I like I like the second episode much more yeah. than the first, and then this was right back to the first episode for me. Okay, in uh, in all regards, <laughs> um, I don't care that I'm a little sleep deprived. I've enjoyed many, many, many things on this channel. Very sleep deprived. It has nothing to do with it. As a matter of fact. Still pretty awake, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I looked at every second of this screen. <laughs> I give my focus. So, if you're someone who I I really don't know how accurate this is to Tolkien lore, incredibly from what I've read, and I don't care <laughs> if it is or isn't. I really don't. Yep. I can't. Stomach the thought. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I mean, you're you're just a lot more forgiving than me, and uh, more patient. Sure. I've been on set, um, so I try to. I'm trying to be compassionate here, but I'm also going to be really honest. <laughs> sure. I've been on set uh, for a. Uh, I was, I was reminded, the reason the Batgirl cancellation upset me so much was because of my experience that I actually had on set recently, as, po as after the Batgirl experience, is that just it was a reminder that, like, wow, to shoot just a few seconds of a film, of a show or a film or something, like with a, with a full on crew, and I can imagine it's, it's, it's way harder for this show than what I got to be privy to. For a pretty decent sized show, um, it can take like twenty to thirty minutes on average just to capture a few seconds. Sometimes it takes up to an hour. I can imagine on this show, with the level of thought that and 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 production that it must have taken forever to shoot an episode. Like countless people, these people credited. These are all these people working so hard. And it takes so long to, to put one of these together. It's a lot of labor. So it sucks when I'm like, you know what, though? the I think the writing of this show, for the most part, is not good. And that's why a script is so important. <laughs> because you're going to get, like, all these people together to bring this script to life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if the script's not good, man, that could be, uh, that could be really boring and <laughs> really like feel like it's a waste of time for a lot of people so totally. so you can sit here and i appreciate your patience i i do like i appreciate that i i wish i had that mentality of you could sit here and go you know after three hours i'm not loving this but you know i'm liking bits and pieces and i'm still waiting i'm still i'm like no 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 for me three hours I should love something about this by now, That's right. and I really yeah. don't. I just don't. And uh, yeah, you, you can't you, you can't deny the fact that that's like one Lord of the Rings movie right there. <laughs> three yeah. hours. That's no. It's that's one Hobbit movie, and and after three hours of that, I don't. And and the amount of cutting around of characters, I just find myself slowly slumping and just trying to care and getting bored. I'm just really bored. I was very bored this episode. Other than the occasional cool... The one thing this show has surprised me on is the violence. Yeah. Is they kind of push the violence a little more than I expected them to. Which is cool. 
always go for a little bit of juicy violence. And uh, I did notice that the one per two people we did not check in with were the two I like enjoyed the most. most. There's nothing L. Ron that rivals <laughs> Ron and Duran yeah. at all in this episode. Two, uh, two. I like, I like, I like um, Nari. Uh, I, I like her. And uh, there are pleasantries. It's kind of predictable how it played out. Uh, this guy from whatever Southland is—is <laughs> is he from the Tolkien universe? Is he—is he a? Because it just sounds seems like Aragorn on repeat. Mm-hmm. It's almost exactly, in a lot of ways, Aragorn on repeat, just far less compelling. And way more cliche. It's yeah, it's weird how this has had so much time to do what it's doing, and yet it doesn't feel like it's really taking its time. But it doesn't also feel like it's getting that much done in the amount of time. <laughs> and there's like you look at those original Lord of the Rings movies, and I mean, you know, everyone's gonna keep harping that, but it's true. Like th- with less time, they manage to give you the right amount of scenes that allow the characters to bond, you to bond with them, you to care, and you to get invested in all these different things so that it feels like a big living world rather than like, oh, oh yeah, that's right, there's this character, and, and they're doing that, and, and there's all these... It's weird. They have all these guideposts and things to foreshadow, and I feel like that that does kind of kneecap them in a way because it's painting its it feels like it could easily paint itself into a corner of you just being the, the same it's like the fantastic beasts <laughs> movies have sort of fallen into this trap of like i don't know we got to have a new voldemort and a new kind of voldemorty thing to do and we got to kind of force this new thing to be the thing everybody knows and i'm afraid that that's essentially what's going to happen here cuz i don't know you're not wrong it's weird like I don't disagree with much that you're saying, and my biggest worry surrounding the entire show was like, great, awesome, I know Amazon can make a show that looks good, but uh, the scripts have to be great. And no, they're not great. Like, there are moments of dialogue that I find pleasant or whatever, but yeah, like Brass Tacks, it's not great right now, and it's unfortunate to have House of the Dragon right across the street because they excel, like, if they just... if. I don't want to necessarily say that Lord of the Rings needs to just be Game of Thrones, far from that, but they could learn a thing or two from how they choose to, yeah, uh, complement the plot with actual character tones that really show the sort of complexity of actually living in this world. I feel like the magic of bringing Tolkien to life is that we get to live in the world rather than, yeah, feeling like we're just doing a bunch of plot beats and stuff and kind of pointing and going, oh, yeah, Sauron, he's coming. He'll be here. Yeah, I think it, I think it, uh, it's focus, as, as much as they try to simplify a focus, which is the rise of Sauron and how these people have come together, will come together to defeat the common enemy, to fight him, to cut off his... Cut his the fingers. ring off his finger and cut his finger off, and then a seal to not throw it into the, the flames of Mordor. Uh, yeah, I sure like I can I can find that linear path, but it's it really feels like it lacks a pulse. It feels like it it lacks stakes. Surprisingly, it feels like it it's not exciting. It's it's not. Uh, the stakes don't feel real because even like the orc camp feels really detached from everything. Yes, the orc camp does feel detached from everything, and the and the characters are um, very, very bland. <laughs> I think they're very bland because uh, they don't they don't give them much life. No, like the Harfoots. The most you get of life in this episode is the Harfoots having their memorial thing. I felt like Nori's just repeated the same monologues, you know, just like. Uh, it's, it's very it's like I feel like you kind of just said a lot of the same things you said in the last episode when I really liked you in the last episode. Mm. And I get it; it's out in the open about your secret giant. So then you have got to repeat some of the shit now to your mom and stuff. Like I understand. Um, and yeah, they're they're doing a lot of world building, but I'm like, for Christ's sake, for three episodes of. Of war. Like nothing felt more human, more connective than Durin being 
being hurt by Elrond for not checking in on him. Like yeah. that connected. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> then they a, have or a mother protecting her son from an orc invading their home. Like yeah. that 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 hits. And then here I'm I'm just I'm just like watching people display information to me. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's also I think I I've come to start associating this version of Lord of the Rings with the big wide shot that never compensates with doing a POV then. We enter Numenor, like the the the, the storied city of Numenor and we mostly, you know, like there's great production value there that you can appreciate, but I they don't it's like when you're in Lord of the Rings, what's so great about having the hobbits at the center is they do give you that ground level perspective to be like, wow, this is a truly extraordinary array of places and circumstances. And I feel like we get too many bird's eye views and not enough ground level views on these things. And that is both in a construction way, but also definitely in a character kind of way. It's like, it's, it's so it's so, like, yeah, with Nori, this episode, pretty much all we developed was, oh, yeah, everybody finds out about the giant, and uh, I guess that's going to be fine, and we're going to keep him. And and now we're moving on. Yeah. Guy gets pulled into this orc camp, and then he stages a 300 fight. And I, I enjoy Galadriel um, in the first episode, even though I thought that episode was like, eh. Uh, I I did say like I I really enjoyed what the what the actress is doing, and then here I'm like okay now you just seem kind of monotone to me just in one note. <laughs> so I uh, I'm just I I'm just a little bit like come on guys you're and I know I'm not the voice of. The majority, or I don't, I don't know what the hell the majority. Honestly, I don't know what the majority is with the show. I, I don't, I don't know <laughs> what the majority is. Seems hard and to I pin care. a majority because there's I, everything. Yeah, I, I know I'm, I'm part of a certain camp that is not the screw woke culture camp. I'm just part of the camp that's like, honestly, I think the show is just a little pretty disappointing in a lot of ways and kind of boring. <laughs> and it should be more. I think it's, I think it. It's got to be, I just don't care about a lot of these, the things that are happening. I really thought we were on an upswing after the second episode. For me, I thought we were. I mm-hmm. sure. And uh, I could be in this, I could be the mind, like I'm watching this before, you know, we're watching this before any opinions have been released yet. So for all we know, I could, I could turn on social media and be like, wow, everyone thought this was the best one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> whoopsie <laughs> but i'll be honest with you this was this was like this did nothing for it, it just it just got more new more characters more information and and it, it it's lacking this this very strong directional it's like think about this uh, the I mean, if you do think about like Lord of the Rings, I saw some people who who went like, I, you know, I watched the Hobbit trilogy before going into this, and I gotta say, this is better. And okay, that's 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 cool. If if that is the thing you're just gonna compare it to, sure. Do I want to commit to watching a show <laughs> which is gonna be longer <laughs> than the Hobbit trilogy? Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, it's if you look at like Lord of the Rings, it's something like pretty simple to latch onto. A character gets a, a ring and is now thrusted onto a life or death adventure where they're going to uncover information as they go, and the ensemble grows the more information they uncover. Yeah, it's not a fellowship until like two thirds of the movie yeah. in, and, and you're not cutting to a million things by that point. Yeah, and then here we're just cutting around to a bunch and and they keep treating it with this like stoic gravitas and that it's the, the like the most life impending doom stakes in the world when I I weirdly feel like it's just not that. <laughs> and well, it's not as if you're going to go stoic and heavy, yeah, gravitas all the time, you have to back it up with some depth and uh, some, 
I don't know, real themes. Not that they don't have themes, but like you got to be able to really put the themes in there and to really make the characters feel vital so that that gravitas attaches itself to the shit that you care about. And if you're detached from it, then yeah, the gravitas is just going to feel like a filter and it's going to feel like it's trying to make up the lost ground of what the writing isn't actually doing. And uh, it feels masturbatory in its poetic way. Well, it does feel a bit style over subs. It's like lear- it's like watching Shakespeare from somebody who you can tell has practiced the lines but doesn't like fully understand the breadth of how no, Shakespearean at, language works. At times I feel like I'm watching like a, a cosplay or actors in a museum. <laughs> it's like watching a play that isn't that's like has impressive bits and pieces but isn't coalescing into just the transportive play experience no and uh i think this ought to be it sh- it absolutely ought to be i mean if again like for whatever enjoyment i can get from this if you want to come right down to it like yeah this for the most expensive show of all time based on one of the most beloved pieces of fiction that has inspired so much uh, the, the writing has to be great <laughs> the writing should be great so my logic brain is pretty much with you across all of this. Dude, you don't have to agree with me. No, but it's funny because I, I wonder what that critical element is because the, I find this more pleasant to watch and I am I enjoy my time checking in with this world. But logically, like, yeah, I'm not getting what I was rooting for yet. And even though, like, Galadriel in this episode... There, for me, there were little glimmers where I was like, "Oh, there's like a mischief in your eye," uh, and it looks like, "Oh, maybe there's some, there is some joy under there for certain things." And and good God, I wish we would maybe hone in on those or, I, or get a character I moment. I didn't. Uh, I I think it's it's tone and pacing is is seriously kind of all over the place. Yeah, it is. Like when she was riding that horse. <laughs> yes, I was <laughs> like, "What the hell is happening right now?" <laughs> this 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 individual sequence is gorgeous and and ethereal, but also it's not motivated well enough by everything around it. It's like it's like what I haven't seen Sucker Punch, but I imagine <laughs> I'm seeing instead trailer. of instead of the, what I've heard about Sucker Punch, <laughs> instead of you know, Zack Snyder being like, shit, look how cool I am. <laughs> it's like, shit, look how poetic I look am. Look how deep this nerd shit of mine is. <laughs> That's what I imagine I'm watching here. It looks cool, but it's not just cool. It's also important. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, it feels desperate to capture a sense of wonder without it authentically getting there. And that's one of my biggest issues with it. Yeah, it makes me sad in that way <laughs> to zoom out from it because, I mean, this is a big opportunity for See, all involved. The but... second episode leaned so much more into horror. Yeah. It was kind of like, okay, we're leaning into horror. And it was kind of a consistent thing throughout it. And there was a sort of like dark mood. It's my man, Bayona. And then here they were like, all right, we're going to go to... Uh, is that what what becomes Gondor? Oh, is that the lineage of I I, I or just before Gondor? I forget. Yeah. I what? Who the fuck cares? All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you've made it to this point in the yeah. video, I think you're inclined to forgive us a late. Then we meet the queen. I'm like, oh, here we go, another stoic ass character. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. Maybe we'll see behind closed doors, and we'll get like a real sense for who this person is, though. But but no, not yet. No. Just another stoic per- character burdened with purpose. Everyone's burdened with purpose. <laughs> yeah, everything is just so like... Actually, that is a thought that I ha- went off in my head. As I, I am burdened with, <laughs> with glorious, glorious purpose. purpose. I, read, I actually had... I was like, I'm not going to say it. Because <laughs> I was like, I know I was a sarcastic asshole in the first episode. <laughs> so you know what? I'm just going to sit back a little bit more and just really try to take this in. <laughs> and... Yeah. Uh, Nope, not not clicking for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is kind of like my Hobbit experience. 
It was. I enjoyed the desolation of Spock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and now that's now that's the thing is is I'm like okay because right now this is kind of <laughs> it started out you know naturally kind of above the Hobbit, but it's it's they're balance they're beginning to balance out because while I find certain aspects of this more pleasing than the Hobbit, it's also like. I think the Hobbit might have more intermittent moments that actually come together, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm always rooting for it to get to get I know to, you are. to rise to this occasion, but yeah. And I'm fascinated to see this what everybody have been thinks. This strong out the gate. This should have no. I <laughs> I I 100 percent. We're three hours in, and I'm like. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, the the only thing again, like it was like that you have everything, and this is what I what I was dreading the whole time is you're not, I you know far be it from me to tell you how to choose showrunners and how to choose writers, but so far, and three episodes in, yeah, you know, like this is eight episode series, so you know we're a substantial way in. And yeah, that's not heartening to me, and that makes me actually sad because again, like this is what I was dreading. And it's funny to watch, again, Game of Thrones come back, and in the same amount of episodes, less, slightly more time, everyone seems really on board with that because they managed to take the sort of Hobbit movies to the first several Game of Thrones seasons, Lord of the Rings, that became the later parts of Game of Thrones, and actually redeem that and actually deliver on, like, oh, wait, this is actually, like, just as intriguing, but just as personal, but just as blah, blah, blah else. And I mean, you know it's possible it can be done and it doesn't feel like I, like I don't know it doesn't feel like they are as focused on getting into the nitty gritty of what you necessitate by spending yeah eight hours and change in this world you know and like almost a billion dollars and almost a billion dollars and all the resource and that's the, the scary thing is part of me is like I feel like the most expensive show with uh, moniker is, is almost a curse, especially if that's what you're known for right out the gate because then it's like, well, if this isn't just perfect, then all bets are off. I mean, like, not to say it couldn't get to a second season, but part of me is like, well, if this isn't great or doesn't get great per, in a good amount of time, then, I mean, is this going to tank... I don't know how much to believe the people who say, like, there's a lot of Amazon Prime's future tied up in Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, well, while I don't expect them to crumble if this doesn't do well, at the same time, I'm like, I bet this would have an impact if it doesn't overall net do well. Because, I mean, this seems like a risk, even though Lord of the Rings is beloved and, and in some ways surefire, this is absolutely a risk they're taking. This seems like more stuff hangs on this than just... Well, it's just not as that interesting, too, even in the grand scheme of things. We're just going backwards. Yeah. It's like The Hobbit went, um, you know, they wanted to tie it into Lord of the Like, what happened right before Lord of the Rings with Bilbo? Okay. Now let's go even further back. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what they meant. I'm like, you keep building to this fucking Sauron business. <laughs> well, that's the pro that's that is a problem. It's like if every freaking Star Wars property, which already has its own terrible case of repetition, kept building to well, how did Darth Vader come to be Darth Vader? You know? And let's flesh out more details <laughs> yeah. about that situation. And 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 I'd rather be like, let's hang out with Sauron. <laughs> and that's the pro that's to me, a lot of what the Hobbit movies missed was in doing that and being like, no, 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 like we got to directly tie this into Lord of the Rings and really make it like a huge piece of that puzzle. It, it it sucks the thing out of the Hobbit that would have made it a good idea in the first place, which is its own story. And yeah, it relates down the line, but it's not really about that. And I feel like this could have chosen to do that again, like. And I promise every episode I won't do this, but you look at House of the Dragon and you're like, well, you know, we're just going back in time and we know a certain amount of things are going to happen and this could easily become the same shape again. Just like, to me, the, the Fantastic Beast movies have started to do where it's like, okay, we're going back in time. We're going to see a different part of the world, but ah, no, we kind of got to do the same structure. And it's like, I feel like you can go back in a world as rich as this into a middle period and, and explore, but this it doesn't seem... I feel like this should have been a show 
arguably where the plot and the big, you know, Sauron machinations. Like, I wouldn't really want to even hear about, like, Sauron every episode until, like, season three out of five or something, you know, where yeah. I'm like, oh, is this going to be five seasons? Because, yeah, right now it does feel like you got your checklist of characters who are, regardless of, you know, context and, and race and gender swapping or whatever, you've got your archetypical Lord of the Rings, we recognize characters and dynamics. And, uh, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I started checking Twitter, John. I know. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'm just, I'm, it's not you. Views uh, done. I don't want to talk about this show. <laughs> <laughs> this has been our, uh, weirdly the one of the more unfun discourses surrounding a show. Because because the thing too is everyone's like got a big kind of extreme feeling, and nobody seems unified. Like it would be simpler if it was just like you know the 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 people who want to hate it, and then the rest of us. <laughs> but uh, nah, I mean they're. I'm fascinated because each time, ever, like some people really love it, and I'm like, I feel more positive towards this obviously than you do. But at the same time, I'm like, I want to see what you what what you see because <laughs> I don't quite see that. And there are people who are like, I hate this and it sucks. And I'm like, well, I don't quite see that, but I get most places you're coming from. Sans, you know, a small percentage of the arguments we've already talked about. <laughs> so. Uh. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to go on Twitter this Friday. <laughs> and every Friday for the next five weeks. <laughs> Don't worry, people will hate it. And uh, people will love it. And then there's the E23. And then House of the Ch- And then you know, people just will move on. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We move on in two days. That's that thing you get to the end of the, end of the episode. Or the know. Last Jedi, and then you got a few oh. years <laughs> of <laughs> debate. Yeah, there you go. Put something like this. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, let's do a Patriots Day show. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Gallagher. We looked your name up on Urban Dictionary. That way, John does not make another pharmacy Scottish joke. Oh. Daniel is a name Bummer. given to many pharmacists. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's in the definition. You're on the right path. But one of the most popular things Daniels are known for are being Scottish. <laughs> oh, no, see? What do you know? It's in your blood. <laughs> kind and sensitive people who put themselves in harm's way just to help and protect people who are closest to them. Just like at the pharmacy. This, that's what pharmacists Constant, do. Like when the pandemic was at its peak, he was going in and still helping people out, exposed to people, maskless when he was told to yeah. wear a mask. But he thought it's not real risk if he has a mask on. Just saying. Do you want to see Batman with a face protect mask? Do you? No. Or hockey pads. Daniels are also people who are willing to give out advice when they feel necessary, even if they aren't asked for it. That's true. He's constantly imposing us, telling us what to do with the thank channel. You, thank I'm you, like, Daniel. Thank didn't you. ask. I, I don't thank really want to go into unboxing videos thank that you, much. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and Daniels are also shy and can take a while to get to open up. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It was like pulling teeth. One time, literally was. And still, wouldn't talk. Very shy about that accent. But once they do, they can be great friends who can be approached to for any reason and without judgment. Yes. Scottish people, man, they're accepting people. That's what we like to hear. It's true. And the pharmacist is not supposed to judge you. You're supposed to, you know, like patient, doctor, confidentiality. I mean, according to Urban Dictionary, what they say is, wow, Daniel is so helpful and kind. He just knew what to say. This is what they usually say about Daniels. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I got to attest for the longest time I've known Daniel Gallagher. Yeah. Yeah. He is helpful and kind. He always knows what to say. <sighs> say something, Dan. Enlighten Do you remember us. when I was constipated and Daniel prescribed me some pills? He did. To make me unconstipated? Yeah, that worked. And then I had to take really a week fast. off the channel because <laughs> you were so not I could not stop. It was hard to sit down here for a reaction to watch a movie. Like the exact opposite I scenario. Like, I can't just keep pausing the movie to go to the bathroom. Yeah, it was like Casper. It was just every time you eat something, just fall right out the and, bottom. And then we tried one time where I was just shitting my pants while we were watching 
a movie. That's when we were watching RRR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, the RRR reaction. Too is... long, and we can't sit here for that long while I'm pooping. Yeah. Either, so I was just getting in the way. We shouldn't have mic'd your seat. You know, I think that was the big mistake. With a road mic? Yeah, with the... <laughs> a backup lav mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We put too many microphones around the base of your chair in that reaction. I think that's when we learned we shouldn't do that. But uh, hey, you stayed regular and uh, you're looking svelte, and that's all thanks to Dan. It's all thanks to Daniel's it's prescriptions. All thanks to Dan. Because he recommends, he cleaned us he out, prescribes me stuff without a doctor's <laughs> prescription. That's right. He abuses his position of power. <laughs> Give people medications they don't yeah, necessarily he's a good need. Good pharmacist, that guy. Love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>